to let now sum up the second stanza and its theme. The second stanza deplored the historical veiling of the women and defends art as a way of coping with the tragedy in life. The arts yet asserts have a fruitful role to play in the world. Overwhelmed by war hysteria, Yeats uses the Shakespearean analogy that the entire world is a stage and further states that the play enacted there is always tragedy. Life is nothing but a tragedy. There is such Hamlet and there is Lear, that is Ophelia. They know that Hamlet and Lear are gay. Their joy in acting transform their fear and tragedy. So tragedy transform, transfigures. The fear and tragedy into gaiety. Their joy in acting transforms it. They know that human life is basically tragic. But they transcend their fate, gaiety transfiguring all the dread, that's an important phrase. It simply means the tragedy in life is transformed into gaiety or joy by artists or by art. Finding beauty and inspiration in the performance, even though the curtain drops on the hundred thousand stages in the world, Tragedy cannot grow by inch or arms. So this is the substance of the second stanza. Now let's take up the third stanza and find out the content of this stanza. The third stanza opened with the line. It presents a sweeping look at the course of history. History in Yeats poetry is seen in the form of moving cycles. It has a cyclical movement. With its endless succession of civilization, the poet imagines them as a great caravan coming on foot by ship or camel or horses or they are coming on mule. Who are they? The armies in the Second World War. Old civilization put to the sword. Then they and their wisdom went to rack. These are the lines from important lines from the text of the poem. Moreover, their great art died as well. He gives an example, the superlative achievement of Callimachus, an ancient Greek sculptor who handled marble as if it was bronze. Only a scrap of his art remains. All things fall and are built again. And those that build them again are gay like these artists. In other words, the joy of life is in the process of creation or creating. It exists in the journey itself not in some goal or object at the end of the trail which is going to live forever. So let's now study the text and find out more about this third stanza. So look at the procession, the caravan of armies coming to decimate this old civilization. That's the opening line. On their own feet they came. Who are they? The army, the soldier, the foot soldier. On their own feet they came. Or on shipboard. Or they were boarding some ship. Camelback, horseback, assback, muleback. They were riding, riding camel. Or they were riding horses. Or mule. But there is a repetition of back, back, back. Because war is essentially disastrous. And it 
turn the civilization to a backward stage. It destroys the economies of the world. The war is the tragedy of human life, but there is no end to war in the world. Man has not learnt a lesson from the destruction of war. Old civilization put to the sword, then they and their wisdom went to rack. They lost their wisdom. Those who were coming to destroy it, no handiwork of Callimachus. So this civilization is not a work of art. There is a ring of irony in the line. No handle marble as if it were grown, who was working upon marble and creating beautiful images. Made draperies that seem to rise. He made curtain draperies and they seem to wave in the wind, ruffle in the wind. His long lamp chimney shaped like a stem. He will work out chimneys from marble, thin cylindrical figure. All things fall and are built again. Art can build and rebuild things. Their joy is in the creation and those that build them are gay. So these artists, they are frivolous and irresponsible. That's the frequent cry taken from the hysterical women. Now, we are going to study the fourth stanza and this is a note on the fourth stanza and its background. The fourth stanza, shorter than the other, introduces carving in lapis lazuli three Chinamen. So, it's a description of the images on the carving on the sculptors called lapis lazuli. There are three figures of Chinese men, three Chinese men, one apparently a serving man carrying a musical instrument, two Chinese and a servant. They are mounting, they are climbing the mountain, are climbing towards a little half house on the mountain, above them flies a long-legged bird, a crane, conventional Chinese symbol of longevity. So their desire, their wish is for a longer life and they are escaping possibly the scene of war. So the whole world is a stage, the West is fighting a war but these Men, they represent the response of the East. They are escaping the scene of war because they aspire for longevity of life. So they do not want, and this is, they do not want to face war. They are escaping. The last stanza elaborates how the carving brings delight to the beholder. It evokes an imaginative journey that goes beyond the scene. Frozen in stone, the poet participates and imagines that the two old men sitting under flooring trees at the halfway house, listening to mournful music, are the sages or saint or recluse or runaway from life. And this Picture represent the third response to war, the calm of sages. They are content. They have nothing to do with the worldly thing. On this piece of sculpture, every discoloration of the stone or crack or dent indicates a water course. The ravages of time, they have transformed the image of the stone 
and discoloration is seen to be in the form of a stream or avalanches or some lofty slope curved with snow or covered with snow the plume and cherry branches are found near the halfway house toward which those chinese men climb Yates imagined them as real men escaping toward the little house where they will sit and stare at the tragic scene of human existence one of them asked the servant to play mournful melodies recalling the talk, talk of tragedy earlier in the poem and as he plays the other men glittering eyes will be gay and joyous they stare out on all the tragic scene below their eyes mid many wrinkles their eyes their ancient glittering eyes are gay this possibly is the response of the east to the war in the west so let's now take up the text itself and find out more from the text of the poem and that's the closing stanza two chinese men on the carving on the stone there is a carving of two china men accompanied by a servant a third a behind them a third are carved in lapis lazuli they have been etched in lapis lazuli the precious stone the semi precious stone over them flies a long legged bird symbol of longevity in chinese legend in chinese literature a symbol of longevity the third doubtless a serving man so there are three there the holy trinity carries a musical instrument he is a musician every discoloration of the stone every accidental crack or then seems a watercourse and avalanche so the discoloration or the dent in the carving represents either avalanche or a stream or some slope or lofty slope where it snows though doubtless plum or cherry branches sweeten the little half a house it's a perfect natural world where they are escaping those chinamen climbing toward and i delight to imagine them seated there the poet imagine they are sitting there watching the scene when the world is going to war they are enjoying the scene look at again the ring of deep irony that runs through the line so they are staring who are they they are the sages and they represent the calm the peace when the world is going to war possibly they imagine they can enjoy their peace those chinamen climb toward i delight to imagine them seated there there on the mountain and the sky on all the tragic scene they share so they are the audience in the theater of the world and they are enjoying the scene the tragic scene on all the tragic scene they share one asks for a mournful melodies so one of the chinese men asks for musical melodies and they start playing the music the servant starts playing the music So look at the closing line now. Accomplished finger begin to play. He is an artist. He is a skilled artist. So he starts playing the mournful tune, the song. Their eyes amid many wrinkles. Their eyes, their ancient glittering eyes are the gay. And the poet comments finally. These eyes of the sages or the saints remain joyous. so art has possibly a purpose to transform 
ट्रेजिडी ऑफ लाइफ इंटू गेटी थैंक यू